Aloha, um, Nikki. Thank you so much for joining me with um, Healing with Aloha. Um, our podcast is about um, reaching people um, with the Aloha spirit, um, helping people to um, to work through, to find comfort and to find hope as they they, they navigate through life. Um, you know, whether it's mental health or grieving for someone they love or just an end in a relationship of some sort. And so I'm really honored and privileged um, to have you to come on and to share about your sister, Michelle, and also just the many resources that you've created um, that could help um, other um, women and men um, as they learn to navigate um, in their healing journey in grief. So can you just share oh, a little bit you. about yourself? Yeah, so my name's Nikki and I'm from Australia. I grew up on a sheep and wheat farm in central New South Wales and I'm one of four girls. But yeah, sadly, in 2017, almost three years ago, my sister Michelle died by suicide. So yeah, now there's three of us left, but we believe Michelle's in heaven and she's still our sister. But yeah, she's just not doing this life journey with us anymore and she passed away. Yeah. Um. Can you, I, can you share, like, cause I'm looking at your pictures um, on Instagram, that's where we connected. Um, can you share um, what it was like um, growing up with your sister? Because you guys did traveling, like you said, you guys wrote a book together. Yeah, well, it was wonderful where we grew up because we were on the sheep and wheat farm with dad and with mom and with our grandparents just up the road. And so my dad and granddad would share farm and all of us girls were a bit like tomboys because we ended up, you know, riding the motorbikes, mastering the sheep, driving the trucks and tractors and helping awesome. shearing share. So we really enjoyed growing up on the farm and, and we used to play tennis on the farm as well. We had our own tennis court and, and I think it was just a really lovely upbringing. Like growing up on a farm is a real privilege and blessing. So that was really great. And we had a Christian family. So all of us used to go to church and yeah, we all had a faith in God through Jesus. And um, yeah, we, we had that faith right through. And my sister, Michelle, she always had her faith. She never lost her faith at any point. But um, yeah, so that was wonderful. And Michelle and I traveled. So I ended up writing this book, which is called Faith Based Travels, a right. devotional guidebook for the faith field traveler. And that was just a devotion for people to stay close to God as they travel because Michelle and I went over to Canada when we were in oh. our 20s and did a working holiday visa. So we travelled oh. and worked in Canada and the States. Yeah. I've never so been, that but it's good. on my travel list. What was your favourite memory <laughs> with um, Michelle in um, Canada? Well, there's so many <laughs> I could probably <laughs> pick from that um, – we were very blessed. We went to a lovely little lodge um, in, a, in Ontario and we met some beautiful people there and there was a lady there named Cindy who became our Canadian mum. We, oh. like I still call her my Canadian mum. Yeah. So they employed us and I was just a kitchen hand and my sister worked in like housekeeping and okay. we just found that was a beautiful start to our travels because God led us to that place and we were only there for three weeks, but then we traveled from there. We came back there later on and we always kept in touch with, with Cindy. So I think that was probably one of my favorite memories. Oh, yeah. Um, did you guys go to um, any other places that close? Cause that is that the other side of the world for you guys? Would um, Canada be considered <laughs> a long time? Yeah. Travel? Because we, we're we down under, so I think it's like 18 hours to get Wow, to that's a whole day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, and also um, Prince Edward Island, you know, where Anna Green Gables was filmed, that is where we went as well. And that felt like we were totally on the other side of the world because we were. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Like, you guys got to travel. I didn't get to travel. Um, I have two sisters. Um, my older sister had a kid before I had my son. And so we didn't get to try. Now she has four. And then, wow. yeah, and then my younger sister, um, like I told you, when she passed away, she was 23. So I didn't have the, the, the ability to. So I'm so glad, like, you guys have those memories, you know. Yeah. And, and we came to the Hawaiian Islands. So we oh, came yeah. to Maui and Oahu. So we loved coming to <laughs> your island. Did you guys try to surf together? Oh, uh, we've never really been surfers, but we loved swimming a bit and we went to the snow and did some snowboarding, but yeah, we didn't didn't do any surfing. We're up in Maui? 
you had no we did the snowboarding was in um in canada but that was just just before we came down to the hawaiian islands yeah that is awesome and you have kids right i've got two sons yeah so when i before or after the kids came you were traveling with her Traveled before, so I didn't get married till I was 28. So okay. I ended up traveling when I was 25. Yeah, okay. so it was just that perfect, perfect time. timing. <laughs> yeah, before I met my husband. Yeah, uh, get it out of your system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I I wanted to um have you share um like a little bit about Michelle and like what led up into that point um because I know that you and mom did a documentary about how um, she, she died from suicide. Um, mm-hmm. can, you, can you share a little bit? I mean, I don't know, like, you know, like what is the, the easiest way for you to share your story? Yeah, I can share. Um, so I've been through my own journey before Michelle died and my journey was one of maternal mental illness. So I battled with postnatal depression when I had my kids. And um, yeah, my kids are now seven and nine. So I had a really deep battle with it. Not only did I have postnatal depression, but also anxiety. And then I ended up with postnatal psychosis, which is a very rare condition. Only one or two women in every 1,000 will have this. But it's something that my grandma battled, actually. My dad's mum had the same thing. And sometimes these things are a bit biological. So within our family, there is anxiety, there is depression, and there is severe mental illness. And there's that potential for each one of us to have some battle at some point. And I think for me and for my grandma, it was during the childbearing years that it all came out. So I I had that journey and my sister, Michelle, had been one of the people supporting me through that. And I got through mine. But for Michelle, she became a child protection counsellor. So she was doing some pretty hard work, you know, dealing with a lot of people's trauma. She may have taken on some of that vicarious trauma herself. But for her, she was in her 30s and she was still single. She was very disappointed that she hadn't met and married and had children and doing that difficult job. But then what really tipped her over in the end was that she got a diagnosis, a medical diagnosis of kidney cancer. And when she got that, I think there was just too many losses and disappointments that she'd faced. And also she just didn't get help in the past when she'd battled a bit. So she'd had times of feeling a bit depressed and she probably had been depressed, but not to the point of clinically diagnosed. Like depression, yeah underlying yeah and like she'd always been you know how people have different personalities yes. even though she'd appear to be very bubbly and she was like that a lot there was this other side of her that was a bit melancholy she sort of had that melancholic personality where she'd be moody so yeah. we always knew her as someone who was up and down she could hide that was the big thing she could hide how she yeah. really felt and how, how she was going and she could pour herself into helping others and giving to lots of other people, but then her own needs got pushed down. Yes. Yeah. So unfortunately with her story, she, she was, um, maybe she didn't seek help for herself soon enough, but when we tried to seek help, particularly mum and dad, the hospitals didn't deal very well with the situation. Like it was a crisis. It was a mental health crisis. And in the documentary, I explained that, it was only 11 days from the time I knew she was in crisis to the time she died. So it was wow. really quick. It was just a quick window of time. And yeah, unfortunately, the hospitals that we took her to um, just didn't keep her there because they thought she seemed okay, you know. And I know it's a hard thing to judge. They have, but is it because <laughs> they took her into the hospital, like they just have certain things they're looking for? Is that what, what it is? that that made them think oh she's okay and I think just at the time when they interview the person like they ask her questions and she does her best to appear well and in those moments she did appear well but unfortunately like because they didn't keep her in there was only one hospital that kept her overnight all the other hospitals involved unfortunately there was four hospitals involved none of them apart from one 
kept her very long. And even overnight, it's not long enough. I know it's a hard system, like they, they're following their protocols, but unfortunately they let one of their own health workers, because she was a health worker, slip through the cracks and they didn't keep her in, which I think probably might have saved her life, but who's to know now? But yeah, that's unfortunately what happened. She wasn't kept and so she, she got ended up home. Did she go home? You guys found her at home? She went home, but she didn't um, get found at home. What she did was, um, because I know we don't talk generally now about what people did to because suicide. It encourages it, yeah. Like if you but she wasn't at home. But, yeah, she did end up taking her life, like, because she wasn't in the hospital, I think. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 and I'm really... Um, It's okay. <laughs> it's you know, good to cry. As a sister, you you feel that bond and that connection. And you you want to fix it. Like maybe when yeah. you guys were little, things happen with your sisters and you guys somehow figure it out how to take care of oh, oh what happened? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's kind of like our role. Yeah. And, um, I'm sure um, that weighed on your heart. Can you share uh, like how, how you felt? Because I know um, where I'm from, I have a lot of friends who recently, um, within the last year or two, they lost family members. Um, and I know it, it's taking you courage because you did a documentary and you're about to do um, a documentary film and you're about to do a book. How did you process your sadness and your grief? Yeah, well, um, it's hard because in my case, and probably like you're saying with siblings, we were like two peas in the pod, Michelle and I. So out of the four girls, we had the closest relationship. And I think when you lose that person, you kind of feel like you've lost part of yourself because you were so connected and, and it was like, being a soulmate, even though it's not a husband and wife relationship, it's still that same kind of bond. Yes. And one of the things I did, which I knew I needed to do, was get some prayer ministry after she passed. So I went, it's called Victorious Ministries Through Christ, and I went to these people that could take me through really deep stuff in prayer. And and I guess um, that bond, you know, that bond was kind of still there, even though she'd passed, we still had that same sort of soul tie happening. And, and so it sort of made me feel like, you know, in just a few fleeting moments, how can I keep living without my sister? Yeah. Um, and I knew I would need to, and I would, and I'd already been through my own suicidal thoughts, like with my mental illness, I'd gotten to that point of feeling like, oh, it's so hard to go on. I don't want to go on like this. Right. And I think that's what it is. It's not that you want to die when you feel suicidal. It's usually just that you want the pain to end because it's such deep emotional pain and it's really hard to deal with. So, yeah, having the prayer ministry. And, and I think just um, she'd written a lot of journals, my sister, for a long time. So I was able to read through journals and that's what I was doing. I was just sitting in bed <laughs> reading journal after journal, right. crying, Standing. yeah, <laughs> processing. I think, you know, shedding a fair few tears and, and just um, trying to be kind to myself because grief makes you really exhausted. And yeah. you have to still carry on. Like, I'm still a mother. I'm still a wife. I still had a job. At that time, I was teaching part-time in a school. Yeah. So they'd given me time off. But, yeah, it's just this really hard process that you have to walk through that you know is going to take time. But because I'd had my own battle with mental illness, I think in some ways there was this deeper understanding of what would have gotten her to that point. Right. She didn't mean to leave us all behind. Like yeah. she didn't mean to cause us this heartache. And I know how that feels to be in that position, you know. So that helped me as well, just having already done my own journey of it, yeah. of mental illness. 
But yeah, in saying that, it's still hard. Like I still dream about her sometimes. Like at night, I'll have dreams and wake up and go, my, oh. Or is she like, because my, my sister died almost 19 years ago. I can honestly see it, like re recalling in my dreams, I've only seen her three times. Really? Oh, yeah. I, I see my sister a lot more. Like I know my sister only died nearly three years ago, but yeah. I, I've always been a big dreamer though. So I dream every night vividly. Yeah. And I think it's probably times when it's coming to the surface again that she comes in the dreams because um, she, it'll be her birthday in, oh, sorry, it was her birthday. It'll be the date that she died is this month. So it'll be three years on the 23rd of May. Wait, so, that was um, no, her birthday, her birthday was the 23rd of February, okay. but her day she died birthday. was, the tw yeah, 23rd of May is the anniversary oh, of the death. Okay. Wow. Yes. Um, my sister's birthday is on May 22nd. Oh, that's so close. Yeah. Yes. We celebrate her life when she passed on um, September 22nd, 2001. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good to celebrate, isn't it? Like, because, yeah, yeah you would like to think of it as a celebration of who she was, not, not the way she died. Like, you know, we're not defined by the way we die. That's one thing I've written in my new book is, you know, that like our life so much more than that, you know, that we want to celebrate the person. And that's why it's been hard writing this book, Precious Michelle, because I don't want it to be illustrating suicide and pointing her face putting her face on suicide but at the yeah. same time I want a story told and I want her life celebrated so it's been a battle doing it I think that's yeah. what's helped me process the grief is writing the book well it's like a dancing your tippy toy yeah you're trying to find your groove in how to go about telling a story and um, yeah respect and honor and love but yet um giving clues to help people to understand, you know, behind yeah. the scenes of what, you know, um, what may have impacted her, you know. Um, I, I, can, I can fully understand about um, suicide uh, because I have a post-traumatic stress disorder and I got diagnosed after she passed away. Uh, but prior to her, her dying, um, I did for years um, as a child exposed to um, violence um, of different forms um, mm. so when she died um, I, I got married um, shortly after and my sister said you know when I was pregnant she said you need to go see someone because my sister had her own diagnosis and she wanted to make sure that I got help because she said when you have a child you're gonna find out things that are in you that you never knew. And so when I did, I got diagnosed with um, post-traumatic stress disorder. And then on top of that, I was still grieving my sister. And then yeah. in marriage, there was a lot of um, real life issues going on within the marriage. And then I'm divorced and I became a single parent and my son was two. And so, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I went through really dark times after my sister, before my sister died, and then after, and then after the divorce. And so I think um, when you understand, um, you have a little bit more compassion. Not saying that it's okay, because if you could, you would fix it or you would move your life and you know, make things better. But it allows you to have compassion. No. And, and yeah, I think like you've got an amazing ministry, like think of what you've been through, what you've overcome and, and how much you can encourage people. Yeah, like because I also think like God is with us through everything and he's going to help you, you know, as he has been, share and have that voice to those women that need you and those people that need you. Yeah, I just take each day as it comes. And just be really grateful. Um, in the Bible, in Corinthians, Second Corinthians, it talks about being the ministry of reconciliation, and like how God comforts you, comfort others. Yeah. And uh, I never looked at my sister dying from a vehicle accident um, as a blessing, uh, but like 17 years later, I realized that um, it made me more humble, and it's made me um, more grateful for people I love. And um, it's made me realize what is important and what isn't important. And to, um, to care and show kindness. Because a lot of people go through this world um, 
carrying a lot of hurt and pain that we don't know about. Like we can look at people and we think they're happy, but maybe they're not. But we have the power to show them kindness. Mm. You know? and God is love. And I just, I think for both of us, like through your writing and speaking, um, film, we have the opportunity to show God's love through art and through, you know, um, our speaking. And even like I look at your Instagram and the things you share, I'm like, wow, like, I know it's coming from a loving heart, but there's that tinge of, you know, like, you miss your sister. Yeah, but, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but I, I know, I know our sisters would want us to live our lives to the fullest, and that's what pushes you for, because you miss them, but the type of people they were, like, very fun, loving, and happy, for the most part, deep people, but they, they appreciate it they wouldn't want us to suffer the rest of our lives, you know? Yeah, they'd want us to live what they couldn't live, I guess. So, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so um, thank you for sharing. I know that wasn't easy to share. Um, I know um, because of everything you've been through, um, you've pivoted, like playing basketball, you, you turned. You know, um, what are you working on now? I know, so you did a documentary with mom. How can people have access to your documentary? Go to a certain website. I can add it. Yeah. yeah. Well, they can go to my website because what we're doing at the moment is we're creating a mailing list for Precious Michelle. So if anybody signs up to Precious Michelle mailing list, then they will receive the documentary link with a passcode. And at the moment, even though we want it shared widely, we don't want it shared on social media. So we want people to keep the link private when okay. they get sent it. Um, but at the same time, we're still hoping to get the documentary in more churches and also in front of health professionals. So we want it to be shared in those kind of spheres. So it is to be shared. So people can go to my website, which is nikkijeffrey.com and join the mailing list and they can see that. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'll just show you quickly. This is the book I wrote for mums. So this is Encouraging Mums with Hope, Light in the Darkness of Maternal Depression. That's the one I wrote based on postnatal depression. And so yeah, it's empowerment for women of faith during their season of maternal depression. So if that's a help to anybody, we also have, um, like I've got a blog and I've got a private Facebook group that people can join for Encouraging oh, Mums with Hope. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a few things, you know, that people can have and you don't have to buy the book, but if you want it, you can. And it's also an e-book on Amazon. So yeah, oh, it's just there for people. <laughs> so they can um, join your, your private group um, on Facebook. They can, yeah. And you know, um, I, I'm, I'm in Hawaii, like I said, I'm in the US. Um, I don't know of anybody who's offering up a support like that. You know, um, I did come across uh, um, a lady on Instagram addressing it, but I don't know if she's a part of a group that is like yours. So I'll make sure, I think I know who it was on Instagram. I'll make sure I'll, I'll let them know, you know, because it's so lonely, you know, when you're going through um, depression, alone, it's, it's already hard. And then when you're a parent, you, you just feel guilty. I know I felt guilty because I wasn't at my best, you know, when he was born, I was still grieving and, you know, I was still like getting therapy to, to learn how to cope with having PTSD and stuff so yeah. I think that's awesome that you are using your experience to help other moms yeah it's a pleasure to be able to and it sort of makes you feel like the pain was worth it if you can help someone else yeah yeah, yeah. You, you take your pain you heal and you create a passion to help the next one yeah <laughs> well thank you so much for your time i know that you have to go and um i'm really grateful for for this time and i, I you're on my list i, I really want to come to um, australia um so I'll, I'll keep <laughs> be great talking. if you could yes okay yeah um, what is the best way for people to follow you on social media um, you can find me if you just look for Nikki, it's N-I-C-K-I underscore Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-E-R-Y, and then you'll be able to find me. But even the website, if you go to my website, you can find me as well. So I'm findable. <laughs> okay. I'll definitely put that um, when, when I post it on the podcast and whatnot. 
But thank, thank you so you. much. And Thanks, I'll, Deslin. I wish you the best, and I'll keep in touch with you. Aloha. Thank you. Bye. Bye.